Hello, I'm Dave Iverson. As any patient will tell you, Parkinson's poses plenty of challenges, and not all of them come from the disease. Take Diane Harrington. She's had Parkinson's for eight years, but when she goes to see Dr. William Langston at Sunnyvale, California's Parkinson's Institute, the first thing she wants to talk about isn't Parkinson's, it's a drug side effect called dyskinesia. And it's, it's bothersome. Mm -hmm. I can find myself now socially being a lot you know, more careful. Uh -huh. And you can see I kind of use one hand over the yeah. other hand. Dyskinesias are excessive, uncontrollable movements. They're caused by extended use of levodopa, ironically, the very drug many patients take in order to move better. And you can kind of think of it as going into overdrive. So in Parkinson's, we have too little movement, but with uh, L-dopa and other drugs, we actually drive patients into too much movement. Now I want you to do just this one with your hand, open and close, very good. And because dyskinesia can be so disabling, doctors often hold back on how much levodopa they prescribe. We're, we're deliberately staying on the low sides, and if we had a way to stop or block dyskinesias, in my opinion, it would change the lives of Parkinson patients more than any one thing you could do overnight. I just can't wait for a cure <laughs> for dyskinesia, if not Parkinson's disease. And thanks to some promising new research, that prospect may be getting a whole lot closer. I think maybe for the first time in my career, we may have really found the target for dyskinesias. The target Bill Langston and other researchers have identified is a neurotransmitter called glutamate, which gets overstimulated in Parkinson's and may lead to dyskinesia. Now both Novartis and Addicts Therapeutics are developing new drugs to inhibit the glutamate response. And in a clinical trial of the Addicts drug, sponsored by the Fox Foundation, patients were able to double how long they could be on dopamine replacement drugs without experiencing dyskinesia. And while more research needs to be done, Bill Langston thinks help may finally be on the way for patients like Diane Harrington. I remember one of my colleagues at a conference on dyskinesias from Israel turning to me and saying, Bill, we will be dead before we understand dyskinesias, and I think we're going to prove them wrong. To be sure, the new dyskinesia drugs must still go through extensive additional clinical testing and the FDA approval process. Research always takes time. But the dyskinesia story is also a reminder that clinical trials can lead to potential breakthroughs. To find out how you can participate in clinical trials and help speed the search for cures, visit michaeljfox.org. I'm Dave Iverson.